introduction of so much for coming out to our shows. Uh, so much for coming out to our shows uh, evening. We really appreciate it. Um, just a few things before we get started. First, just take a minute to see where the emergency exit are in the event that uh, we need to use them in, for an emergency. Um, please take a look through the playbills and consider supporting the businesses who purchase ads in our playbills. We really appreciate their support. Um, the, there will be a 10 minute intermission, so if you could uh, wait to exit the theater until the intermission, that would be great. Please remember to turn your phones off, or at least to sound off and not vibrate for the show. And no flash photography while the act is running. Thank you, and enjoy the show. Oh, you and Pedro whipping up sweets after hours too? Oh, Connie, 
What a thing to say. I mean, really? Yes, really? It's just you and Paige are all day slaving away over hot teapots or whatever. Pedro has a wife and four children. He's a very nice man. And besides, my horoscope says I ought to wait on love until after the new year. You're still reading those things? Of course. I wouldn't know what to do with, well, you don't need an astrologer to help you make decisions. I never once read my horoscope. Maybe you have. Hello? Anybody here? Honey, I really should tell you why I wanted to meet you here this weekend. How long have you been sitting here? Only 15 minutes. And you haven't seen anybody? Checking times at three. Somebody should be here. Check in there. Hello? Anybody here? Oh. Reagan, what's happened? Oh, Connie. It's <clears throat> gonna be okay. Who? Who is he? I don't know. Is, is he? Well, I mean, yeah, he's in freezing. Oh, he looks so horrible. Oh, I don't think <laughs> What do you mean? Nothing. It's just odd the way his lips are blue and there's foam around his mouth. Oh, stop it! I gotta call the cops. Not on his phone. He's dead. Here. I got a cell. No service. I should have guessed it. This far north? This far from anywhere? Of course there's no service. And that's the way we're going to keep it. How long have you two been sitting here? Not long, but you should have shouted. Can't hear much over that darn dryer down there. Sounds like a locomotive. Look, lady. Mason. Essie Mason. Second in charge here. Did you know there was someone in the study? Probably Nick. Always in there. That's where he goes to hide. Don't you hang. Hey. What in heaven's name are you doing here when... Storm. The early ones are so blasted that they pull every wire down. 
demented stuff? It's not sick or demented. It's supernatural suspense. A lot of warped ideas you got, Missy. I really enjoyed Dark Side of the Moon. Did you? I felt so sorry for the vampire in the end. I, I hope my readers would. Sorry for a vampire. You're one weird laugh now. Look, Mr. Curtis, is it? Clark Curtis. Curtis used cars. Ours will run for your money back. Mr. Curtis and his wife are regulars here at the inn. Nice to meet you. I'm Clay Gerard, and this is my sister Reagan Taxter. We're having a mini family reunion. We just need to get away from it all. That's why everyone comes here. But it appears whatever it is, it followed us here. Look, Missy, maybe you want to explain what you were doing in that room. And how you got in there without anybody seeing you. Not through the window, that's for sure. There has been snow all over the carpet if she'd come in that way. I didn't use the window. I went through that door. So then you were in there the whole time? Why didn't you say something? I, I couldn't. What do you mean you couldn't? I, I lost my voice. What kind of a writer are you? Not only are you sick and demented, but a chicken to boot? I'm, I'm not. Quick, Miss Mason, she needs something to drink. So about what time did you go into the site? 5.30. You were hiding in there all this time? Yes. Where were you hiding? Closet. There's a closet in there? Two closets. Hank kept fishing and hunting here in one, and suitcases in the other. He traveled a lot. Oh, always gone. If it wasn't New York, it was somewhere in Europe. Sometimes the Far East. Never could keep him here. And when he was here, he was worthless as a toothless beaver. Was he a travel writer or something? Hank Wright? You've got to be kidding. That man couldn't write two sentences without a misspelled word. No, Hank just had a hankering for adventure, but he did own the inn. We both owned Hickory Dickory Inn, Missy. But who owns it now that, you know, he's dead? Who else would it be? It's mine. And I've earned it. I practically ran this place myself for years. Yes, I see. Miss Grimm, why did you go into the study? To get, to get a... Why didn't you just come right out? Heard Mr. Mason coming. He wouldn't have minded just swiping a pencil. Maybe it wasn't a pencil she was after. Hey, Satan is in there. If you stole one thing, I only wanted a... So, you hid inside the closet when you heard Mr. Mason coming. Was he alone? Who was with him? I, I couldn't tell. I started to make notes. Didn't pay any attention. I guess I should have. You couldn't have foreseen what was going to happen, Miss Grimm. Well, safe is still locked. Didn't you check to see if anything was missing? Are you kidding? Hank never trusted me with his precious combination. I only took a... That doesn't explain where he keeps it. I don't know. Look, Mr. Curtis, you cannot go accusing Miss Grimm with Kiki. Where have you been? After you fell asleep, I heard something out of the room. I thought I might go check. What did you hear? It sounded like... Hacking at the wall or something. Maybe it was that goofy old Brit practicing golf. You know how they like golf. And what would Edgar Hill be doing practicing outside in the middle of a snowstorm? Mr. Hill's another guest. If it's any of your business, yes. And we also got Sarah Dane, but she sticks close to her room. She she <coughs> likes to read. Yeah, done being nosy. You should have woken me up. Oh, Harvey, I didn't think too much of it. I just oh. I thought I was watching. What'd you find? Well, when I went to go check, it it looked like somebody cut the telephone off. There, there, it'll be okay. That's not the worst of going. Somebody took a shot at me. Somebody tried to kill me. Just a ticket, and you? Me and my sister haven't seen each other in several years. It just 
time to work out this time. Coffee, I got coffee here. Dinner's cooking, but thought we might need something to tide us over. Want a cup? Oh, Clarky, I'm too scared to be the thing. I mean, it was awful. Where were you when you heard the shot? I was on my way to the highway. What are for? Just to check. I mean, why would somebody think a telephone line? I mean, well, I just thought. Well, I don't know what I thought. Years are irrational, Mrs. Curtis. We can't explain all of our actions logically. Thank you. Sarah? Kind of nasty out there for a stroll, isn't it? I, I wasn't strolling. I know. You went outside to see the loquacious Mrs. Curtis. Hey, don't you call me loco nothing. Or you'll have two black eyes and a broken arm. I'm sorry if your pebbles are so narrow, you can't hear a compliment when you hear one. But it's not a compliment. Did you say shoot someone? Someone apparently took a shot at Mrs. Curtis. Apparently nothing. You got a gun on you? No, of course not. She could have tossed it anywhere. Nobody will find it till spring. If Miss Dane says she didn't have a gun, why? Then well, she didn't. What did you go outside for then? A frosty pick me up, of course. You know something, Gil? You're starting to get on my nerves. Yeah. How come you gotta be so English? Look, I went outside because I was trying to make a phone call. First to my room, then to the hall phone, and finally down here. So you went outside to send smoke signals instead? No, but I wanted to check the line. Well, Kiki was already doing that. Yeah. I never saw Mrs. Curtis. Why would you bother going outside in the middle of a snowstorm to try and check a line? Well, I worked with the telephone company during my college summers, and I thought maybe I could fix the problem. It doesn't take college education to see that the line is cut. Not only cut, but from high into a tree. It's twisted around a number of branches. So it was deliberate. But who'd do such a thing? Maybe he's out there waiting. And he'll get us all. Now, don't go saying things like that. We're going to be bumped off one by one for crimes we weren't punished for. What crimes? What is he talking about? Stop scaring the woman, hell. Look, we've already got one mysterious death on our hands. We do not need to all tearing each other apart. Death? Who's death? Mr. Mason. He's in there. What happened? We aren't sure. Maybe he got shot at with the same gun Kiki was shot at. Yeah. He couldn't have been shot. If Kiki... If Kiki got shot at, then he probably did too. But, but, I had heard shot, and now he was in there. You didn't hear anything? When you came through this room to get outside, was Dorn study open or closed? Why are you asking me all these questions? I'm sorry. I'm Connie Gerard, and this is my sister, Raven Tasker. We got here right after, well, after Mr. Mason died. I work at the police dispatcher in Boston, so I know a little bit about procedure. Your cop? Dispatcher! Well, I feel a lot safer now. Seeing as though we can't call the local police. Our amateur Sherlock Holmes deserves our fullest cooperation. The door is closed. About how long ago was that? I don't know. 20 minutes ago? Want some coffee? You must be cold. Give me a There's a cup of coffee on the desk in the study. Miss Mason, did you make him a cup of coffee? He was a big boy. He could make his own. Yes, I see. And there's only one cup. What are you thinking? I'm not sure. Too soon to say. Should you really go in there? Only feel the company needs Mr. Hill and serve as a witness and all of the other things. I don't like this, Essie. I don't like this at all. I know. There's something fishy going on around here. Clarky, I don't want to stay here anymore. But we paid for the weekend. I don't care. This place is giving me the creeps. I kind of like it. You would, you weirdo. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Will this be the setting for your next bestseller, Miss Grimm? Oh, I'm not so sure about that. I'll sue your socks off if you mention Hickory Dickory Inn. This is going to cost me plenty of business as it is. Oh. I would never name. You just better not. Because this place is all I got. Oh, it's missing. People won't stop coming here. It's too beautiful. Too secluded. The perfect place to hide. Or to run away. Sarah, may I ask you a question? How did it feel when Mrs. Curtis accused you of shooting at her? I think I was confused. Were 
were you angry? I didn't know what she was talking about. Did your stomach flip flop or did your spine tingle? I'm not sure. You did break out in a sweat or anything? No, of course not. Why do you say that? Because I didn't take a shot at her. That would explain it, wouldn't it? Explain what? The wages of guilt. Right, Miss Grimm? That's a good way of putting it. Well, why are you asking me these questions? My next book is about a girl. A woman, really, about your age. Who, well, is engaged. But then her fiance dumps her, and she isn't one to take that lightly. So she finds a witch who can help her get revenge on him. But then, I don't think I'll be reading that one, Miss Grimm. But it all goes wrong for her, Sarah, and the spells cost her a lot more than she bargained for. Poor Miss Grimm. She's got a real way with people. Tell your sister I've got cooking to do. You folks will be hungry in a bit. And your findings, dear Sherlock? I'm not sure, but I am, dear lady. <coughs> I'm ready to go in the coffee cup and you keep the pressure of cyanide. That would account for the foam about the mouth and their bluish color. That would also account for the instantaneous demise of Mr. Mason. You read a lot of detective stories. Yes, well, we all have our vices. What else do you think? You mean the two hearing aids lying on the desk? Open. No batteries in them. Maybe Mr. Mason was in the act of changing them when. When what? I don't even know the foggiest. I'll leave it to dear Sherlock here. Dear estimating my assistant. What a strange man. I know. It's almost as if... As if what? I don't know. He just seems big and weird. <coughs> he seems to me like he's a character out of a Agatha Christie mystery. A reparations from the middle of one. He was murdered then. By a person or persons unknown, as they say. Why did you tell him that your police was captured? Instinct, you're a cripple. Let's keep it that way. Look, Connie, I need to level with you. Sure. What were you doing before I got here? Were you really just sitting there the whole time? I don't mean about that. I mean about why I wanted to meet you here this weekend. I thought it was because of Ben more years. Six. Oh. I know the streets fun both ways, but that's not it at all. It's Dad. Look, if it's time for a nursing home or something, he needs quadruple bypass surgery. Not that, huh? All well, that five two is finally cut to me. It's a fairly routine operation now. Reagan, these things are never routine. But the doctor said Yes, I got it. Routine. I'm sorry to hear it. You know, he wants to see you. So that's it. I guess it's the realization that, you know, he might not well. So he wants you to forgive him. I don't know if it's that. For getting my marriage to Ivan off to such a rocky start that it never recovered. I don't think you can blame Dad for that. He was always hateful and vindictive towards Ivan. For your own good. No, for his own good. The surgery's Friday. I've taken a lot off work already. They say if a person goes into an operation with their mind and heart at ease, they'll have the strength to do a lot better. Just see that we have the verbal team beforehand. Connie, I don't see how you could be like that. We need to sign the registration book. So? Well, well, well. What? It seems Sarah Dane has been here before. In the company of a man named Robert Fielding. She's got little eyes. Doesn't seem the type to draw hearts. People love to strange things. Maybe that's why Miss Grimm's new book idea offended her so. Look! Miss Grimm left her notebook. I've always wondered where writers get their ideas. Are you two girls staying here? The storm will be over by morning, and then we can get in contact with the police. Yeah, well, we're not. We'll stop in town and let them know on our way up. Connie, what about Dad? Look, if that is the only reason you invited me here this weekend, then maybe we better pack up and leave too.
that. Like Tom. 
Tom Bailey. Who's Tom Bailey? An actor. He's not just a actor. He's the action star in the States. He makes 007 look like a dud. Don't you call James Bond a dud? I'll have you know, I wouldn't mind him shaking and stirring at me. I'd like to see <laughs> He was in a killer stop, was the name? That's the one. And Night nice Living Zombie, NASCAR Massacre, and Dying is Hardly Enough. And you say He's not saying it. I tell you, Kiki, there are certain gestures he's making. The way the guy says stuff that just makes me think of that. Why would Tom Bailey be pretending to be someone else? Beats me. It's the perfect way to commit a crime. Because we would never know who the real Edgar Hill is. You could walk out of here, sue his real identity, and no one would ever be able to trace him back here. Bingo. If only someone would have thought of them. Besides, unless they're in a database somewhere, they are essentially useless. So, we were just making some tea, Miss Mason. I'll make the tea, thank you. But Miss Grimm's a bit upset. I'm fine, Sarah. Good, then stay out of my kitchen. It's just tea. It starts with tea. Pretty soon it's a mess, and I can't find anything. It's okay. I don't want tea. I don't want anything. Let's see, Miss Grimm. Look, Mr. Curtis, I'm getting tired of your 
save me. Miss Grimm found it. I would have thought she had a dinner. She was hiding under the table. That seems more appropriate. Look at these numbers. Zero, one, one. Zero, one, one. It all adds up to nothing. You left out one thing. What? The thing that you took from the study of birds. It doesn't have anything to do with it. Reagan. It doesn't. You knew Hank Mason, didn't you? No. You're lying. Even if I did, what difference does it make? Look, my sister, if you're in any kind of trouble. I'm not in trouble, okay? It's not like you've been there for me for all these years. Why start now? Look, I know I've been a rotten sister, but you cannot try and blame me for trying to pick up the pieces now. There's nothing to pick up. Don't be ridiculous. We just have to be honest with one another. Oh, is that so? Well, I said I was honest when I said I didn't want to come here. Well, I was being honest when I said this was the best place for us to meet. Where are you? Yes! Why is Hickory Dickory Inn so important to you? Maybe you knew Hank Mason and you came here and tried to kill him. Touche. Doesn't feel so good, does it?
any guarantees. Well, never are. Even if the spirit of Mr. Mason does respond, he might not tell us much. Like what you took from the study of Burns? You don't put a lot of faith in family, do you? What does that have to do with this? I said it wasn't important. Why can't you just leave it at that? Because I can't break it. This is murder we're talking about. Not someone swiping a box of celestial seasoned lemon zinger. I said, break it, just the truth. All right then, I want the truth on why you insisted on coming here. Business, strictly business. I suppose you hadn't any business. You wouldn't even come. That's not true. Isn't it? Look, I was just looking for your number. I was going to call you and set up a nice time to meet. I really was. It was just what serendipity that you called me that night. I was just looking. Great minds think alike. It's true. All right, then. Unlike you, I'll take you at your word. Look, Regan, I've been trained to know when people are lying to me. You never needed training. You always knew. I can never pull anything over you. You always knew when I rode your bike or played with your dolls. How'd you do that? For goodness sake, Reagan, you always managed to put a dent in my life, and you could never redo my doll's hair the same way I did. So, the truth? I still like that on antiques. You said you saw them in your tea shop. Yeah, but I'm not always sure when I'm getting. So I picked up a mirror one day at a garage sale. It was pretty weathered, but not broken. What I liked about it was its frame. It was ornate, but simple, you know, and it was stud with jewels. What does this have to do with Hank Mason? Hank Mason was the local resident expert around here. I didn't know him at all, but a friend said to give him a call, and he'd tell me if it was worth something or not. So you've been to Hickory Dickory Inn before? No. He drove over to my tea shop, and I showed him the mirror. He says it really wasn't worth much, just a fancy imitation of Louis the 14th or 16th or something. But he said he knew someone should pay 150 for it. And I said, great, and he took it. But he never paid you. A customer who's seen Mason take the mirror told me he turned around and sold it to a Boston hotel for $12,000. It wasn't imitation. Apparently, the real Louis the with Evans looked at himself in that mirror every morning. What did you take from the study? When I arrived tonight, I looked around for someone, and I went into the study, and I found Mason dead. No wonder you were so jittery when I got here. I hadn't just wanted to come here out of anger, and then I thought, what if he was murdered? What if I connected him somehow? What if the police thought I murdered him because he cheated oh, me? Reagan. The only thing I could think of was I signed a bill of sale, and it might be somewhere in that room. I checked the papers on his desk, you know, and there it was. I suddenly heard you coming, so I ran out of the room onto the couch. I knew I had to get that bill of sale and destroy it later. I know I've done something wrong. And I don't know what it's called, but there it is, the truth. I don't care if you believe me or not. Of course I believe you. I'm so afraid, Connie, so afraid. No one needs to know. Are you sure? <laughs> Stop! This isn't getting us anywhere! 
chimed on the hour. Battery sign. It doesn't run on batteries. It's an antique. It's a sign. He's here. Let's sit down and hold hands. It's happened before. But what about the gunshot? 
and the lights going out because we were all in the room. The gunshot, Kiki reported, never really happened. It was just a red herring they sent to make sure suspicions were cast in another direction. So who knocked me down when we heard that other shot? I'm afraid that was me making a mad dash for it. You see, I saw through Tom Bates' disguise early on and asked him to help me in exchange for keeping his identity a secret. He created the commotion of gunshot so I could escape and go check the guest rooms. Later, I snuck back into the study. But of course, we used Mr. Curtis himself to thank for the blackout. You used this, didn't you? A remote to control switch attached to the main, main breaker. Click once, flip go off. Click it again, they come back on. Easy to rig up. He just had to make sure he was the first one to check it. To get rid of all the evidence. Easy enough for Clark, since you were already in the guest room. They were planting evidence. I didn't need to plant anything. I found the poison in your purse, Kiki. Very careless. You came here to kill Hank Mason to have the whole operation to your greedy self. Miss Mason, is there anywhere we can keep these two until the storm breaks? I found a couple of storage rooms in the basement, good-sized padlocks in the doors. They won't get out of there. Lead the way. George, give me a hand, will you? My pleasure. Wouldn't want this tremendous wacko running loose again. Or a I have a huge back pocket in your forehead. Oh, it doesn't hurt. You should take care of it anyway. Yeah. 